Hello, in this video we're going to be taking a look at factoring expressions. Um, problems like this usually say given this sum um, represented as a product of or represent this sum as a product of its GCF and the remaining um, terms, something along those lines. Basically it's a coded way of saying factor out a GCF, um, kind of like the reverse of the distributive property, if we want to think of it like that as well. Um, so we're going to take a look at two different examples here. Um, on the left, just a simple sum of two whole numbers, 20 and 32. And on the right, something containing a variable. Um, both are going to be similar. Obviously, the variable, we have something extra to take into consideration. So on the left, I'm going to factor out the GCF of 20 and 32. So obviously, I want to find what that GCF is. So for 20 and 32, we're looking at a GCF of, we'll do a little ladder technique here, Pull out a 4, 5 and 8 have nothing in common or are relatively prime, so the GCF is simply 4. I'll bring that back actually. Okay. So we're representing this as a product of the GCF when we factor, of the GCF and the remaining terms. In other words, kind of like the leftovers, if you will. Um, so what's left over when we pull out a, f a 4 from 20? 5. And what's left over from 32 when we pull out a 4? 8. Now what's interesting about our ladder technique, if we look at the bottom row of what we had earlier, we can see we kind of have those same numbers. Um, and this is always going to happen, do it correctly, um, which will help for factoring at least. When we're finding GCF normally, you know, the bottom row doesn't really have much of an impact other than telling us that we're simply done. Um, but here it's kind of giving us those leftovers. Hey, what's, what's still there when I pull out a 4? 5 and 8, respectively. Um, so this is also demonstrating the distributive property kind of like in reverse. In other words, if I were to distribute a 4, I'd get exactly what I started with in blue. Also, um, demonstrating some of the properties of operation here. We can add the 8 and 5, multiply it by 4, and we'll get the same thing as obviously 20 plus 32. Okay, on the right, I'm going to do the same thing. So for 6 and 27, I'm going to start by finding the GCF. So I pull out a 3 to start, 2 and 9, relatively prime, so I'm done. Um, for the A, there's only an A in the first term, so I don't want to count that as part of my GCF. If we remember with variables, they do have to be present in either term to be considered a GCF, and then we would simply take the smaller exponent. But in, that, in this case, we don't even have to worry about A being a GCF because it's not. It's not in both terms. So I'm just going to pull out a 3. Now, what's left over from the 6A? If I pull out or divide out a 3 from 6A, what's left over? Not just 2, but 2A. And you could do a quick little distribution in your head, or actually do it out, 3 times 2a would give us that 6a that we had originally. Okay, And the remaining term would simply be 9. So you see in either case, left or right, there's nothing else we could do in the parentheses. 2 and 9 and 5 and 8 on the left were both relatively prime, so we did correctly factor it as much as we could. Um, and it's an equivalent expression. That's also important here, and this is an important 6th grade um, key skill or core concept, if you will, creating equivalent expressions. What I started with in blue and what we circled in purple in each case were equivalent. We're just simply rewriting it by applying some mathematical concepts. Um, so there's always a good way to check it in that case. Um, you could simply, like we said earlier, distribute and you should always get exactly what you started with. So thank you for watching. This has been Factoring Expressions.